is Nina Perez at Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you so much for watching. This show is created to speak about life topics, and we're going to hit some really good life topics this year, 2020. This is what we're doing. We're going to talk about some real things and, and hopefully challenge and transform your thinking. So today I have a special guest, and her name is Reverend Jessica N. Bass, and she is the founder of Day of Birth. It is a faith-based pastoral care and counseling practice with a multifaceted mission to midwife the seed of purpose within others. So I am excited because I'm going to see what she has to say and I'm going to take some of that for myself for this year and see how I can birth some new things going on. So Jessica, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I Nina. thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I really went I went to your website, I started looking through everything and you are have you are doing some amazing things on there and there's some really great topics that I'd like to hit on today. Um, but before we do that, I always put you on the hot seat. So mm -hmm. welcome to the hot seat. Thank you. And that is for you to let our viewers know a little bit about yourself. Well, Nina, thank you so much for having me um, oh, it's a today. Pleasure. It is a gift um, to be with you thank and you. to um, see what the Lord is doing in your life. I am super excited. Um, so Day of Birth is um, basically um, a mission and a ministry that God birthed in me 2011. So we are a couple years old <laughs> and it has been a journey. Um, first of all, Day of Birth came out of my own journey with God mm. of realizing um, who I was, my identity in Him. And I know that we talk a lot about that and, you know, Christendom, we talk about, you know, our identity in Christ. But yeah. I really had to go on a journey and figure out what that was all about, right. who I was. And so Day of Birth actually is from my name. My name, um, Jessica, means Hebrew, in Hebrew it means God sees, God beholds. Oh. And Noel is my middle name, which means Day of the Lord's Birth. And that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and in um, in our culture, as you know, we celebrate the day of the Lord's birth on right. December 25th, Christmas right. Day. Um, and the Lord just gave me a revelation about that. He said, your life is a gift to this world. Every single person that the Lord has created on the face of the planet has something to offer this world that nobody else can. Right. Wow. The problem is that we oftentimes get stuck we miscarry purpose, if you will, because trauma, pain, hardship, disappointment, life stuff happens. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. And so Day of Birth is about helping um, individuals to unwrap the gift of their life's purpose from the tissue papers of trauma, right, right. from pain, from disappointment, and helping them to get unstuck. And sometimes you need a little bit more than just prayer, Mm -hmm. Although prayer has its place, yep. you need a little bit more than just going to church, yep. although going to church has I its say that place. All the time. Sometimes you need the partnership yeah. of, of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and your therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl, yes, that is true. So, so why, why, Jessica, why, why did you decide that this was even a journey? Like, did you go through some. Um, trauma yourself that kind of said, you know, I need healing in this area and I maybe others do too. Absolutely. Yeah. I have been on and I continue to be on a journey. Mm -hmm. All of us are on a journey. And I say that because I don't ever want anyone to look at my life and think that I've arrived. I have not. Right. Every single day is a is a determination to get up and to and to partner with Jesus right. in terms of the purpose and plan that he has for my life. But to answer your question, yes. Um, I grew up um, as a little girl in a Pentecostal church, and I'm so grateful for the strong foundation mm. that was laid in my life at such an early age. Um, as my pastor would say, God had me on a short leash. Right, right. <laughs> and um, <Good>. <laughs> so I'm grateful for the teaching, um, sound doctrine. I learned how to have a relationship with God on my own. Um, but I was also in a bubble. Mm -hmm. I lived in a, in a very sheltered bubble and I really was not prepared for real life mm -hmm. outside of the covering of my church, outside of the covering of my, of my two-parent home at the time. And um, right at the end of my high school tenure, uh, going into uh, college, my parents uh, got divorced. And they got divorced after about 20 years of marriage. That's hard. And um, it was extremely hard. Yeah. Um, my parents are um, very affluent in the community. They're Christians, they're believers. 
um, we were like the Cosby family right. here in Connecticut. <laughs> right, right. And um, for that to happen, it devastated um, my family. And I, I didn't know at the time how much it had devastated me because I used going to school in Atlanta mm -hmm. as a big distraction. Right. And I stuffed my pain and I repressed my pain. And one thing I know now, looking back, is that if you don't deal with pain, if you don't deal with life, life will deal with you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so I went on this journey of really trying to, I was asking like, God, why, why would you allow that to happen? Like I th thought you were good. You know, right. I thought you were, you know, th this wasn't supposed to happen to, you know, my family, even though divorce is, is unfortunately common, but I just never thought it would happen to our family right. unit. And it had me questioning. And it had me searching and it had me seeking. I was trying to understand who I was and I was seeking for validation and mm -hmm. approval. Mm -hmm. I was auditioning and tap dancing for approval of man. Right. And it wasn't until I discovered who God says that I am that I began to heal from the inside out, that my relationship with God deepened. It wasn't just what I was taught or what was handed down to me or the scriptures I was taught to read or you know I was taught to pray I was taught to fast it wasn't the things that I was necessarily just taught it became my survival mode right it okay. became what I depended on God became my source for real mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because I had to go inward and really right. wrestle with God in terms of who I who I am right. who, who am I outside of my parents who am I outside of the church that I was raised in? Right. What is your purpose and plan for Jessica? Right. And one of the things that I found, Nina, was that um, I did a lot of wrestling by myself with God and I went to counseling. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, I never grew up hearing that we should go to counseling. Right. It wasn't something that was necessarily talked about or offered through my, my church, my, my spiritual um, experience at the time. And I started thinking, and the Lord started dealing with me about the integration of spirituality, a person's faith, into their therapeutic process. Mm. Um, and so I went, I ended up going to school. I was gonna go to law school. That was my plan since sixth grade. I was right. gonna go to law school. But at the end of my college uh, career at Spelman, uh, Dr. Cynthia Hale was our baccalaureate speaker. She is a pastor in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and she spoke during our baccalaureate address, and she came out of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, and she talked about um, how God had called Jeremiah from his youth to be a prophet to the nations, and how God told Jeremiah, don't say you're too young, don't fear. Um, and that sermon began the pivot of my whole trajectory from law school to now discovering what it was that God wanted me to do. I landed in seminary, had no idea where I was or what that really was about. I thought seminary was synonymous with divinity school, was synonymous with Bible college. Right, and right, right. I had no idea where I was. Right. I had no idea that I was in the place <laughs> right. where you train to, be, to do ministry professionally. Right. No idea. Right. And um, landed in seminary. Then I was approached by my professor of pastoral care she came to me, took me out to lunch, um, and she began to pour into me. I had no idea at the time how valuable that discussion would be, but she poured into me and she said, you know, you have a gift. She said, I'm looking at your work, I'm looking at your papers, you have a gift. Why don't you consider doing ministry as a, as a counselor? You, you are a woman of faith. She said, but why don't you consider bringing those gifts into the marketplace through counseling? And that's when it all started. That's awesome. I, um, and I enrolled in um, UConn School of Social Work for my social work degree, and I'm very blessed today to say that I'm a licensed uh, uh, clinical counselor. That's awesome. And that's a great journey, huh? It's what a wonderful That's the Reader's thing. Digest version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a wonderful journey. Uh, it's, I'm listening to you, and it's bringing something in me because I was literally talking to my husband just last week or the week before and I was saying to him well I'm going to go back to school for my master's in uh, theology and, and divinity mm -hmm. and I said but well, I don't know why I keep feeling like I'm being pulled to pastoral care right. and I'm like what, what is happening right now you know, what is this guy <laughs> doing but it's funny because you're saying that and it's almost like confirmation about something I already had discussed like two three weeks ago so it's That's just amazing. weird yeah it's oh god I got you um, so why did you feel 
I mean, it's one thing to go to your counseling, right? It's one mm -hmm. thing to go through that journey um, and become uh, licensed or, um, yeah, you said you're a licensed clinical yes. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what does it, you know, why day of day of birth though? I mean, like what made you think that day of birth had to be birthed? What, what was the lack or something you were seeing that you were like, okay, I got to fill this need? Right. So, um, like I said, when I was going through, um, that wrestling time with mm -hmm. God and struggling to figure out who I am and my identity. I'm hurting because our family has split and, and also watching different people in my life um, struggle mm -hmm. with their own life issues. God began to deal with me about that intersection between having a relationship with God, but also taking the time to, to look introspectively and, mm -hmm. to, and, and as far as what inner healing meant. And that's why day of birth is, is in existence today. Day of birth is both, it's a faith-based counseling practice. Okay. It is an opportunity for people to bring God into their therapeutic journey. Mm -hmm. If people don't wish to do that, that's fine. I can be, I can be completely clinical um, with them. But I have found as I'm doing this work um, and as I'm on my own journey and I'm uh, coming alongside other people, I'm finding that we heal in mind, body, soul, in spirit, just as God made us. Yeah. And I'm finding that the results are a lot better when you're journeying with God, when you're bringing him right. into the wrestling, the questions of why. And right. you never really, sometimes you won't get answers. And a good counselor knows that their job is not to roll out answers. Right, right, right. It's to come alongside. It's to create a space, to curate a space for people in a safe place safe atmosphere to do the wrestling right wow that's good and in the wrestling like jacob mm -hmm. you come out different right. you come out with new meaning that's you're able so to synth synthesize what god might have been trying to do or how god might use this pain and redeem it mm -hmm. in ways that are far beyond what you could imagine right now so you're not the fixer you're almost like the guide absolutely right i am not right. the fixer jesus <laughs> is the fixer yeah. but then Nina, I have found sometimes Jesus doesn't choose to fix it. I know. Sometimes, I know. <laughs> sometimes, you know, we don't get the answer to our prayer in the way that we thought. Yeah. And that's hard. Yeah. And that's why Day of Birth is born because no one was there to answer those questions right, right, when right. I was growing up. It's a difficult place to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a good reality for people to understand that that it's not always gonna get fixed. Right. I think that one of the biggest disappointments that I've had in conversations with, with others, the biggest disappointment I've seen in others who either are, are wrestling with their faith or have lost their faith is because they thought that Jesus was supposed to, supposed to fix everything. Right. Um, and when he doesn't, they get disillusioned and right. disappointed. Right. But I love that you're saying that you're very candid and honest that it's not always going to be fixed and that is also okay, right? Right. So what you're trying to give them is the tools to deal with when it's not fixed, what are the tools to deal with that, right? Right, right. That's really, really good and, and a really great transparent way to deal with somebody's pain. Because I think that when you can deal with helping somebody with their trauma or pain um, or their feeling of insignificance in a very honest way, now we can work. Now right. we can do something. Right. 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 Yeah. That's that's powerful. So day of birth is, um, to me, sounds like something that is very needed, um, and something that I find not too much of, to be honest. You know. Right. I think I could find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of regular counselors, and I've gone to counseling myself, but not many faith-based counseling. Um, and if they are, I want them to be authentic and right. just tell me that it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out, you right. know. And, but it's okay. This is what we're gonna do for you to move from that. Right. 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 Yeah. And like I was saying, uh, uh, it's like you were saying, it's almost like um, you come alongside yeah. as a guide, as a companion mm -hmm. um, of the soul. Mm -hmm. That's that's the um, that's the way Day of Birth offers um, counseling. It's to equip mm -hmm. with tools. It's not to fix, it's not to give the answers, because <laughs> I'm human too, right, right, right. and I'm on my own journey as well. But if I can create a space for people to wrestle with the hard questions, 
to come to a place of new meaning. Yeah. If I can help with the meaning making process as that individual arrives at their own answers. Right. If I can pray, if I can offer a healing presence um, as they cry, as they weep, as they mourn, as they tear open uh, pain that has been stored and yeah. repressed then I'm fulfilling the purpose that God gave me. Right, right, wow, that's really powerful. Do you find, um, do you like have a thought or a theory as to why so many people seem to be in a place that they are effective in this way, like in this uh, despairing kind of way or a, a place where they feel like there's no purpose or you know, what am I doing? Like I noticed that, the, that a lot of conversations that I've had, um, they feel like almost like there's too there's too much going on and they almost can't narrow down that there is a purpose mm -hmm. you know what i mean like at least the conversations i've had because i i because of straight talk it gives me a great platform to speak to people very candidly right you know um and i always tell people are you a straight talker because if you are then we could do this right <laughs> right um and i feel like a lot of people are challenged, and I, one of the things that I've seen, especially with like um, when I speak to little kids, like maybe 11, 12 years old, mm -hmm. they kind of know what they want, but they don't really know what they want. And at that age, you don't really know what you, you really want anyway. What you want. But I think that we are maybe have a little bit too many options, and a lot of things that have hurt us, whether it's um, image, you know, whether it's we don't feel good enough, whether it's we were bullied. You know, whether it's a bad relationship, you know, all those things cause a lot of trauma. And it almost makes you wonder why, uh, why are people so affected? You know, why is it that so many people are struggling and are f battling depression is on a, a really big high, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and Christian and non-Christian. Right. Um, and so I'm wondering if you've ever like, had these conversations with people and like, wow, I'm seeing a recurrent theme of, or anything like that. Have you ever encountered that thought process? Um, I have seen a lot of people in despair, as mm -hmm. you described. I have seen, um, especially in this current generation of young people, um, a lack of hope. Yeah. Um, and I believe that that goes back to my own experience of being a person searching mm -hmm. and knew God, was raised right, right, to right. know God and to know the truth, but yet searching. Mm -hmm. And so I think that our, our generation is overstimulated. Yeah, we, we have so much in our face every day. Um, on one hand, it's convenient. Social media is convenient. You know, cell yeah. phones are convenient. Um, smart TVs, you know, all the gadgets that we have, but we're overstimulated. Yeah. And we do not create space anymore for silence. We do not, so true. We do not yeah. um, hold dear to the discipline of prayer and meditation and, 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 and reading the scriptures yeah. and yep. getting our fulfillment from Christ alone. Um, we we search we we are look we're all created with a god shaped hole and i think the challenge is that we try to fill it with everything else but god right 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 wow that's good and we're not ever going to be satisfied until we allow him to fill that space right and he is the only one that satisfies i can say that today right 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 he is the one that satisfies he is the one that fulfills um, and so I think that it's because of a lack of hope. Yeah. It's a lack of, of fulfillment. It's yeah. a lack of satisfaction. We live in a world that's, um, you know, microwave. We want things in an instant. And when we sure. don't get them in an instant, we have an attitude. Right. <laughs> it's true. And the it's thing true. is, God doesn't work on our time. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of disillusionment. There's a lot of lack of hope and despair. And then also, there is a lack of purpose. And what I try to tell people, people come to me all the time and ask me, you know, well, what is my purpose? I don't know what my purpose is. How do I find out what my purpose is? And the first thing I ask them, straight talk, what are you good at? Right. What do you love to do? What would you do without getting paid? Right. What wakes you up in the morning? What keeps you up at night? Right. Those are the things, those are the gifts of God in you that you were born with. Right. 
And life is about figuring out how to get them outside of you into the world to share with other people. That sounds um, like something, you know, when you are um, with someone and you're counseling them and they are not believers, uh -huh. they are not believers, um, it gives you a unique challenge to mm -hmm. try to work around the God-shaped hole, you know? Because uh, I agree with you. I think that I think that we are we all have a hole in us that God created that only He can fill. I I, I feel the same way because I lived a lot of my life without God. So when He filled it, I'm like, wow, that's what I was missing, you know. <laughs> uh, even though you know that doesn't at all um, negate the fact that we are human and that we go through challenges and that sometimes we feel lonely and we go through those things as well, right? Um, so that's a unique challenge for you. But I I almost feel like you can also cross them where you can say to someone who doesn't believe in Christ that, well, what wakes you up in the morning? Exactly. Well, what, you know, because there's still something in them, right? right. We're not saying that because you're not a believer, you don't have a gift right. or that you don't have a talent. Right. You right? have a purpose. Each and every right. single person, as I said earlier, on the face of the planet has a purpose, has right. a gift right. that is worth offering to the world. Something that cannot be duplicated something that cannot be copied, something that cannot be manipulated or hijacked or airbrushed. Right, right, right. <laughs> it is unique. Just like your fingerprint is unique, that's how unique your gift, your purpose is mm -hmm. to this world. Mm -hmm. The challenge is to find out what it is and to get to the business of, of walking it out. Yeah. And like I said, the, 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 the impediment to that for a lot of people is pain. Yeah. It's trauma. Yeah. yeah I don't get yeah. to the business of doing the purpose that God called me to, whether I know it was God or not. I don't get to the business of doing that if I'm stuck and I'm reeling from pain and I don't know what to do with this pain. I don't know how to get rid of this yeah. pain. This pain was not my fault. Right. Sometimes, you know, we go through things in life, traumas in life that is not our fault. Right. We did right. nothing to deserve it. Right. That's true. Uh, and there are things that we have done that are our decisions. Absolutely. And But we have to contend with that, At, you right. know. The wrestling. Yeah, it's the wrestling because sometimes it is our decisions that are that have hurt us. Absolutely. And I think that one of the things that happens or, or that I've seen in my own life and in others that I've loved is that we take that and we almost let that be the reason why we don't move forward, right. you know. Like it's almost like an undeserved like, I don't deserve to move forward. So this is just where I'm at. You know? Shame. Shame. Shame, guilt yep. are huge impediments. Huge. Huge impediments yeah. to, to giving birth to your life's purpose. Yeah. And that's, um, that's where our work comes in is yeah. helping people separate from the shame and from the guilt and from the disappointment yeah. of whatever it was that happened to them. And that is a lot of work there, Reverend. <laughs> That's a lot of twisting and turning there, Lots. you know, because a lot of times um, what people will share with you, they think is the reason until you start digging in yes. and realizing that it's actually something completely different, but right. it's caused this reaction absolutely you know? so when we come back that's what I want to talk to you about I want to talk to you about the multifaceted approach that you have to helping others and how is it that you actually go unwrapping and unraveling some of that stuff for people okay sure awesome so thank you so much for watching don't you go anywhere we will be right back to talk about this important topic of just finding your purpose and unraveling all of this in our life we'll be right back I believe that each of us has a purpose. I don't care who you are, or I don't care where you come from. There is something that only you can do in this world. And that's why we're here today, plain and simple. If one person walks out of here with a better understanding, then I know God is pleased. Thank you so much.
welcome back. This is Nina from Straight Talk No Sugar Added, where we are discussing real life topics. And so we have been talking to Reverend Jessica N. Bass about unwrapping things and, and how we can find our purposes or what does that even mean. So we are here and we are having a really great conversation and I am enjoying you very much. I'm so glad you're here with me today. And so I wanted to talk to you about that multifaceted um, I, I was on your website and I was reading a little bit and it was talking about that you have multifaceted approach on how you're helping others with the healing process. And so I was talking about unwrapping uh, and unwrapping emotional stuff and unwrapping all of this stuff. And what is, what is that? What does that mean? So Day of Birth was founded for the purpose of um, informing, inspiring, equipping, and empowering. Okay. And so... Um, I believe that you need to first be informed that you have a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people don't That's don't think true. that they do, and if they do know that they have a purpose, they have no idea what it is right, or how right. to tap into it. Um, and so I believe very basically you need to be informed. You need to be motivated that you do have a purpose, and if you don't know what it is, I want to motivate you to find out what that right, is. Right, and that's um, a process. It is a process, a process. To, to get a person to believe that they are worth something, that they're right. worth that they're worth more than what their set of circumstances has told right. them that they wow. are, yeah. you know? Yeah. So informing people that they have a purpose, um, also informing involves connecting them with certain resources, depending on what their issues are when they present, when they mm -hmm. come in. Um, it's connecting them to the resources that they need that That's could really be great. that could be in the workplace that could be um, you know financial that could be um, you know anything from um, networking um, just providing uh, a wealth of resources that are tailor-made to connect them with their life's purpose oh, wow. the second is uh, inspiring mm -hmm. so I believe that people need to be inspired to find out what their passions are Passion and purpose go hand in hand. Right, right. As I said earlier, what is it that wakes you up in the morning? What is it that keeps you up at night? What would you do if you had all the money in the world to make it happen? Or what would you still do if you never got a dime for it? Right. That's your passion. Right. And you need to be inspired right. to get those juices flowing. You need to be inspired to connect with other people. How do I connect with other people yeah. that are doing what I see myself doing or right. what I wish I could be doing? Right. Um, the, the art of mentoring, the art of, of getting connected um, with, with uh, people in your community, being inspired to find out what your passions are. And so Day of Birth has hosted, in the past, we have hosted um, several events that do just that, um, allow people to... To, to look at what their passions are and wow. connect with people who are doing their passion. Right, right, right. Um, thirdly, equipping people yeah. through uh, counseling. So equipping people with the tools um, to unwrap their gift uh, of purpose from trauma. And what does that mean? That means that, as I said earlier, a lot of times we get stuck. We mm -hmm. get stuck from fulfilling purpose because we don't know what to do with this pain. Right. And so um, I believe that we are multi-storied individuals, and, and that is a form of therapy that um, I do with clients that come. It's called narrative therapy, and it is a oh, process. Amazing. It is a process of deconstructing your story, um, because a lot of times, as you said earlier, what they come in uh, reeling about really isn't the core right. issue. Right. It's a symptom of the core issue. And so just like you peel an onion, yeah. that's how we work. And we deconstruct yeah. your story layer by layer. And we equip you with some meaning making tools to understand what happens, how to separate that from who you are mm -hmm. to, get on, to get on in the business of fulfilling your life's purpose. Wow. And fourthly, empowering. Um, I have a heart for women and youth. I have a heart for everybody, but I know that I'm called particularly to uh, young girls and to, to women and to bridge that gap between being a young girl into becoming a woman. Right. And so the empowering um, comes through conferences, comes through retreats, comes through um, other events that are kind of tailor-made mm -hmm. to helping women 
be all that they can be and understand that even though we live in a patriarchal society, you too, <laughs> me too, <laughs> right, 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 right. we have the Me Too movement, yeah. but you too are special. You too are the head and not the tail. You too can be who God says you can be, right? no right. matter what. Right, and what, you know, one of the things I'm, I, I want to also touch on and be clear about is that this is a process, right? And I yes, think that um, a lot of times, we, like you said, we live in a microwave world and um, sometimes people feel like oh I went through one session I'm good mm -hmm. um, and you're not mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot that goes into what you're talking about I mean you're talking about informing inspiring equipping and empowering you're not doing that in one session no ma'am yeah exactly you're not doing that in, in one session and when I say that to say that um, you know, to go through something like uh, th through the counseling process contacting neighbor you know if, if, it, if you're willing to do that is that you have to be willing to also do the work and understand that this is going to be a process. Yes. And I think that uh, we have to get back to what you were saying before, like we don't pray enough, we don't meditate enough, we're just not quiet enough, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, to go through a process of counseling, and I had to do that too, because I felt the same way, this is why I'm saying it, because I felt like when I went to counseling, after a few sessions, I'm good, you know? And then I realized, ah, good right. you know, you know right. you, you're not um, it's a process and so I think that's really important for people to um, kind of gather from this and understand that when you talk about day of birth you are talking about a process of really going side by side with somebody and helping them through their aha moments their their healing you know right it's never going to be a and that's why overnight. the image of a midwife is so part and parcel to the mission and the vision of day of birth because um, as you know being a mom and delivering uh, children mm -hmm. um, you can't do it by yourself that's right. and so um, a midwife is somebody that comes alongside right. it's a person that tells you how to breathe it tells you a person when to breathe and mm -hmm. how actually mm -hmm. to get into the zone and breathe with the contraction and not fight against the contraction um, mm -hmm. the contractions I like to relate to pain in life right. things that we go through trauma in life um, and it's better if you have somebody come alongside of you and saying nope there's something important that needs that's inside of you that needs to come out and I'm gonna help you deliver it I'm gonna help you get through it how and anytime you, yeah. you give birth there's gonna be pain yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that how do you go through that pain process with them I think it's because since you are um, uh, somebody who's a professional and are, and are doing this, you already know that the pain has to come before the blessing, right? Yes. Before the actual aha, right? Yeah. I help. I try to help people, as I had to discover myself, um, I try to help people understand the purpose of pain. Right. Well, a lot of times, and my pastor has um, said this many times before, a lot of times we misinterpret the use of pain mm. in our life how God intends it. I don't believe God causes it. Right. I do not believe that God causes suffering. I do believe he uses it. Right. I do believe that he has a purpose for it. But if we are just so stinking mad and angry at the fact that we're in pain, we'll never understand the purpose of it and how to make it work for us. Right. Good. How to, as I said a minute ago, how to breathe with the contraction, right. how to get into the zone and say, okay, this pain is about to hit me in five minutes, right. but I'm going to get ready and I'm going to bear down. And when it hits, I'm going to push, right, right, right. you know, that's, right. that, that's why the, the image of a midwife is so, God gave it to me. It's so part and parcel. It was a revelation from God because I haven't had my own children yet, yeah, right, right. but I know that that partnership and that marriage between a midwife and a person who is called to deliver something purposeful into the earth is so powerful. Right. Think about the midwives in the Bible. Right. When Moses yeah. was born, right? Mm -hmm. If they had not had those cunning midwives who knew what to do, Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh would have succeeded yeah. in killing Moses, who was what? Sent to be a deliverer right. to bring out the people of uh, Israel out of bondage. Right. 
So you you always need a midwife. <laughs> you, you always need a midwife <laughs> That's really, really to protect good. purpose. Right. So, you know, uh, if we're going to go metaphorically, you might not have your own children, but you are basically the midwife in this story, right? Yes, so ma'am. you have a lot of a lot of children <laughs> if you look at it that way. And that's amazing and you know, it's something that I think people have to um, just kind of get their mind around and wrap that, you know, a counseling um, you know, going to somebody to come alongside of you, coaching, things like that. It's not because you're less than or insignificant. It's right. not because you are crazy. It's not because you're, you, you can't get it together. Or you, it's none of those things, none actually. Those things. I always, even with my children, um, with their partners, I always say, you guys should go to counseling. They're like, what? My, what's the counseling? You know, we're not even, we're not married yet, or we're not this, this it doesn't matter. You, you preempt it, right? You go before so right. that you don't have to later. Right. You don't have to fight it later because right. you got the tools, right? Right, And they're right. like, oh. I'm like, it just makes sense. And, you know, I think that, I, it, like a like a coach, like a life coach or a weight loss coach or whatever, that's what they do too. They come alongside of you and they help you. Now they can't sit there with all your trauma and things like that. But what I'm saying is, is that there's always good to have an accountability partner Absolutely. or somebody who's going to hold you to it, right? right? Like you said you weren't going to have that behavior anymore. Why do you think you have that behavior and what are we going to do about that behavior, right? Right. I mean, a lot of your work is that. It's, you know, it's helping them through that contraction, as you say, and some of that is uncomfortable. Or, you know, like you, I loved how you just said that counseling can be seen as a preventative. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't see it as a preventative. Mm-hmm. A lot of peop- people see it as something that I got to get into after something has happened, which right. is fine. Yeah. Um, but the need for it, however you come to it, it is a necessity. Even yeah. for myself, doing this work necessitates that I have my own accountability okay. systems yeah, and partners. Say that. Yeah. And, you know, I have my family. I have um, really close uh, girlfriends, I have my pastors, but I also have my own therapist. I, yeah. I have my own person that I can go to my own safe place and really do straight talk and talk yeah. about the stuff because if not, then I am going to be susceptible to transference, counter-transference, bleeding my life into the life of the people that I'm called to serve, which is not healthy. Yeah, I was going to say that. You got the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I was going to say, you have to keep yourself healthy, really. Because Absolutely. I think that... Maintenance. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the truth is, is that when you're a person who loves to come alongside others and serve others and help others, you can't help but to kind of take some of that on because you feel responsible for this person, right? You feel responsible for their well-being and their mindset and their health uh, uh, on how they're going to, you know, you gave them the tools. Now you're saying, will they do it? You know, it, I mean, yes, you have to be professional enough to know that some stuff you have to leave there. Absolutely. Right? Because I'm sure that that's a difficult thing, especially when you hear something that is super traumatic. Right. Right? That you were like, wow, I've never been through that myself, but that is a lot. Right. You know? That has to be hard. As a counselor and also as a minister, Mm -hmm. you have to um, be intentional about your own self-care and self-care includes instituting proper boundaries. Yeah. And that is something that um, I had to learn as a deep as a person with deep empathy and deep gifts of mercy and grace, I had to learn how to work my mercy gift and not let my mercy gift work me. Right, right, right. I had to learn, okay, yes, God has given me this gift. He's wanting me to come alongside people, but there is still the importance of boundaries because I'm not yes. the savior. I can't fix anybody. I can't mm-hmm. make anybody do anything. I can't make anybody see the truth, see the light. And I can't become codependent yes. in my calling. That's right. And I can't use my calling as an excuse to be codependent and boundaryless. Right. And that can happen. Oh, it it happens. Yeah. That can happen. All the time. And sometimes it happens until you get the message, right? right. And you realize, whoa, this is... This is not working. Right. You and know? I had to bump my yeah. head. Like, oh, I'm sure. Trust me. I've, I had to really <laughs> sure. bump my head. Like I said, it's a journey and a process for me. Yeah. But God is so gracious yeah. that he's the ultimate guide. And he says, okay, all right, all right. You're on, you, I, I can take you off. You were on training wheels. I can take you off training wheels now. Right, right, right. You, you, got, you, got, you found your balance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I mean, it's not very different from parenting. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my son, my oldest son jokingly says, you know, you were so much lighter on uh, my um, his younger brother. Yeah. You, were, um, you were tougher on me. And I'm like, you know, that's true. But that's because with you, I was learning, right? Like I was really learning 
what are my boundaries? What can I can and cannot trust him with? And what can I, you know, so by the time the second one came, I, you broke me in. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so that's the same thing with your counseling, right? Like the first few, you were probably like, oh, I'll bump my head a couple of times. This hurts. Let me stop bumping my head, you know. Um, but, you know, counseling is a very difficult thing. And I used to jokingly say, especially um, to my current pastor, um, he was, we were talking about, you know, people and how much people want his attention and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I said, that's why you're the pastor and I'm not, jokingly, right? And he would laugh. He's like, Nina, you're funny, whatever. And then I feel this calling from God now. And I'm like, oh, no, see, you play too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, God, you play too much, you know, because. Uh, well, because yeah. pastoring is yeah. not just about, um, it's not just about, you know, having a church. Right, of course. Past, it's not just a position. Right. Being a pastor is a nature. Right, right. When you, when you have the heart of a shepherd, when you have the heart to care for God's people, um, for the care of souls, mm-hmm. um, the wounded soul, the broken hearted. I think about Isaiah 61 where it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Mm-hmm. What? To, to minister to the broken hearted, to bind up wounds. When you have that heart and that nature, it doesn't matter if you don't have a position or right. a, pa- a, a church following. You are a shepherd. Right. Right. And people you're, you're will flock both, to you. And you're both, woman. <laughs> no, that's a lot of work. It is. It's a lot of work. People come with a lot of work, right? I mean, we love them. We want to care for them. You want to help them, obviously, or you wouldn't be in the position that you're in. Um, but it is a lot of work. Yeah. It is a lot of I'm work. I'm a lot of work. Yeah. yeah well, we're all a lot of work. Exactly. Right? We're all a lot and of if work. you know yourself and if you know the mercy and the grace that God has extended to you, yeah, yeah. then it's a little easier to have the compassion, the yeah. patience, oh, yeah. and the mercy for others. Yeah. And that's the thing is, is having, a, a, you know, um, you probably have it a little bit extra. <laughs> and the reason I say that His is grace. because. Yeah, it's, it is his grace. Um, and the reason I say that, I'm jokingly, but I, I mean it, uh, in that, you know, you're, you're one person, right? And um, you, one person can deal with one person, but you're talking about a multifaceted uh, amount of people, right? Different personalities, different people coming at you, different, you know, different situations and different, different mm-hmm. circumstances. You're still the one, though, right? right? This is why you need to be able to unload on your uh, counselor as well, on God and through prayer. All right. of that is so important, and right. it all works together. Right. Um, and I think um, day of birth is um, going to reach a lot of people in a very powerful way. Thank you. Um, I was on, like I said, on your website, and I was just reading through it, and I'm just like, wow, this is really fascinating and fantastic. And I think that, um, I think it's, I, I can't wait. I hope I have you here again in another year or so to find out all the wonderful things that you are doing. I would love to. That would be great. Um, but I did want to also talk about something you kind of snuck, uh, I kind of snuck and found out about, which is that you might be writing a book. Yes, ma'am. So can, uh, you don't have to give us a title or anything. I know it's not out, but can you give us a little bit about what it's about? Yes, I can. So um, my forthcoming book um, really is a devotional guide. Uh, we talked just a few minutes ago a lot about trauma yeah. and a lot about pain. And um, I have found from doing this work that um, a lot of times we read the Bible or we read devotionals, and it's to spur our spiritual growth, right? Mm-hmm. It's to spur deepening our relationship with God. But this devotional is different in that uh, while it does position you to deepen your relationship with God, it invites you to bring into that the pain, yeah. the, 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 the trauma. It, 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 it spurs you to bring those parts of yourself, your emotional and your mental wow. self to God instead of separating it from your spiritual self. And that's something that um, growing up in the context that I grew up in and even now in certain circles, um, we tend to separate who we are spiritually Mm -hmm. from who we are emotionally and mentally. And Peter Scazzaro said it best when he said, you cannot be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. (laughs) And so this (laughs) devotion, (laughs) Peter Scazzaro, not me, but this devotional guide um, seeks to help people to integrate prayer, the disciplines of prayer and meditation with wrestling, with asking God the hard questions. Lord, I am um, experiencing pain from this particular issue or this particular trauma. Lord, how do I forgive? 
How do I forgive my dad who was never in my life? How do I forgive my mom for being an alcoholic? How do I forgive my rapist? How do I forgive people in the church who were supposed to be safe and they ended up hurting me as well? It asks the hard questions. It prompts the reader to partner with God in their healing process. So you've got prayer, you've got scripture, you've got the devotion, but then you've got reflective questions. That's good. I want that book. <laughs> <laughs> Print it up, woman. <laughs> so um, is it going to be a devotional that people are going to be doing daily, weekly, monthly? It'll be um, a 40-day uh, devotional guide. Oh, nice. Okay. It'll be a 40-day devotional guide. Oh, no, and it sounds like something that... It, even though it's 40 days, it sounds like something you should keep repeating. Absolutely. That's what it sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 40 is the number of uh, transformation. Mm -hmm. If you look th throughout the whole Bible, you will see the number 40 over and over again. Mm -hmm. As we know, Moses um, right. was um, on the mountain with God receiving the Ten Commandments. He was away for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus went into the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. When you want transformation, when you want breakthrough, when you want healing, Healing, when you really are serious about it, you'll go on that 40 day journey. Right, right. And so this is just a guide. Again, it's a companion to the soul to help people connect their emotional and their mental self with their spiritual self. You got a lot of people who got the spiritual part down. They right. know how to pray, know how to fast, you know, but we don't necessarily know how to we don't know what to do with our pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm suggesting it's scary. I'm suggesting that we bring all of that to God yeah. so he can make us whole. Right, mind, right. body, soul, and spirit. Right, right. That's good. That's going to be exciting. Um, please let us know about I'll that. I'll keep you updated. Uh, yeah, please do because I'd like to announce it when it when it does sure. come out. So that would be Thank fantastic. You. Um, and uh, I definitely am going to be buying one, so I can't <laughs> wait um, because I think that things like that um, that really the way you're describing it. Um, I've been through a big journey of healing myself with writing my book and all of that, but. I feel like even with all of that healing, there's always things that mm. get lingered behind. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the 40-day journey, um, the guide sounds like something that I would do, and then probably when I'm done, do. And then probably when I'm done, do. Because yeah. life does that to you, life doesn't does it? Life does it to you. Life does it to you. You just you have a new battle yeah. and uh, something new that's come against you or something new that hurts or something you forgot about that just came up again. Right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a really good thing, and I'm I'm excited for you, and I'm excited that that's coming. Um, so please don't forget to let us I know. I will let you know. <laughs> I am going to be excited about that. Thank so you. I did want to um, start closing us out, but before we do, I wanted you to give at least one or two takeaways to women and young women. Um, anybody who's watching that may be experiencing some challenges living with wounds. Um, living with some pain or maybe just even feeling insignificant are there is there like one or two things you can give them to maybe start today or start thinking about today in that area first and foremost basically you're not a mistake Amen. who you are is a gift to the world who you are is purposeful and it is my hope that we all get to figure out. There was a man named William Barclay that said there are two important days in a person's life, the day that they are born and the day they find out why. Yeah, that's good. And, and my hope and my prayer for um, everyone, but particularly for young girls um, and, and women who have been battered or, and abused is to believe, is to believe that they are purposed that they are, that they b belong, that they are not insignificant no matter what has happened. A lot of times we, um, we interpret who we are, we interpret our identity by what has happened to us. Yeah. And so my hope and my prayer is that if you are struggling with pain, if you're in a relationship that is not life-giving, that can be, be romantic, that could be platonic. If you are in an environment that is toxic and unhealthy, I want you to ask yourself, does this reflect my purpose? Mm. Does this reflect the best life that God died for me to have? That's good. Ask yourself, are the people that are in my life adding or subtracting? 
Are they spurring me on to positivity and to growth? Mm -hmm. Or are they subtracting? Are they sucking the life out of me? That's good. Begin to ask yourself those questions. And then my other takeaway would be to partner with someone in a connect group, in a care group. We weren't hurt alone, so we're not going to heal alone either. Right. We right. need God and we need the community. We need the fellowship of other people yep. to come alongside of us in, in healthy relationships. Yep. Um, and so that would be my, my second takeaway is to find the people that are healthy, find the people that um, are where you want to be mm -hmm. in life. Get a vision, mm -hmm. get a picture of where you want to be in life and go after it. Yeah. Be yourself. A lot of times people used to tell me that all the time, Jessica, just be yourself. And I'm like, who's that? Well, who's that? <laughs> and I had to, yeah. I had to I figure had that out. And that every too. day it's a yeah. journey of figuring out yeah. more and more who you are, not because of who you say, but because of what he says right, you right, are. Right. Exactly. Once you understand what he says you are, it's easy to be yourself. Yeah. And that's my hope and prayer yeah. for, for anybody that's listening is not just be yourself, but find out who that is. Yeah. And that's going to take some time, but be willing to do the work. Yeah. Be willing to invest in the work that it takes to find out exactly who God says you are. Yeah. And then once you have that, run with all your life. Yeah. Run, walk it out. Those are awesome takeaways. Thank you. I know that personally, uh, if you do not have a sense of yourself, then somebody else will tell you who you are. Exactly. You know, and they always get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad. I'm so glad that um, God has put you on this path. I'm glad you didn't become a lawyer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm glad that you, um, you took um, what could have been a very painful experience for yourself and you went through that pain, but that you're willing and dedicated to helping others go through theirs. And that is commendable. And Good I thank time. you for that. I'll Thank you for God. that because you don't have to do any of that. You don't, right? You can just go work somewhere and not do anything to help anyone. And it takes, you know, something in you to say, okay, I'm going to be obedient to this and I am going to do what I feel I'm being called to do and I'm going to do it well. Right. And you don't have to. So it's a choice. It is a it's choice. It's a daily choice. Yeah. So thank you for making that choice. <laughs> and I'm very, very glad that you were here with me today, Jessica. Thank you, Nina, thank for you having so me. Thank you so much for I being so here. appreciate thank it. Thank you. May God bless you. You too. And I can't wait for your book. I'll so let, you let know. us know. I will. <laughs> so if you want to get on her website, please do. Um, it is www.dayofbirth.org. On there, you'll see the contact information for info at dayofbirth.org if you need to email. But there's also a lot of great information on there. Just go on there and read. A lot of it is even healing just reading it. But definitely read it. You know, sit in it. Try to uh, find out what your purpose is and who you are and what God says about you, like Jessica says. And I think that this journey is going to be an amazing journey this year. So happy 2020 to you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Nina Perez at Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Until next time.